Welcome, thanks for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel, for the latest of my Heads Up series videos. Today I'm going to explore one of astrology's most beautiful influences, a combination between the energies of Venus and Neptune. This occurs exactly on the 3rd of April at 28 degrees in Pisces. There's a particular richness to this unique event because Venus is exalted in Pisces, which means she rises there, but also Neptune, of course, is the co-regent. So there's a particular receptivity. It also occurs in the third decan, which has a sub-rulership of the passion of Mars. And yet the influence builds up from the 2nd of April and ends on the 5th when Venus glides into the fiery sign of Aries. I'm going to unpack all of this for you. If you're new to my channel, it's lovely to have your company. If you have any thoughts, please share them. I try to interact with each comment. If you're a returning visitor, I really appreciate all your support. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. And just briefly, if you'd like to get your free daily written horoscope fired to your device each morning, I've been writing these for near 30 years and my work features in one of Britain's most read newspapers and in websites the world over. Please see the link beneath this video. I also provide the dominant influence for each day to give a, a wider perspective, as well as each of the 12 signs from Aries through to Pisces, which you can relate to in terms of your ascendant, the sun or the moon. Also, if you're interested in having a one-to-one -one with me, please check out my testimonials underneath this video. These are completely unedited. As they come out of the contact form, I just put them on my website. You can read about people's experience of working with me. So on the screen now, we have the event chart and you can see there are Venus and Neptune together. This gives us an opportunity from the second through to the fifth to really enjoy expanding our senses. But the sign of Pisces, of course, is the sign of culmination. So it's very spiritual and the energy of Neptune can create a very evocative mix. For example, if you went on a date today and you really felt a connection, it could be uh, a day that you always remember, whatever the long-term outcome was. And if you are someone who has skills in terms of creativity, artistry, film, photography, music, you can showcase those magnificently over the next few days. However, if there is someone who's been interested in you romantically recently and you're not quite sure where you stand with that person, it is important to understand that this is astrology's uh, most idealistic combination. And of course, Venus isn't just about relating, it can be about money. So if you are discussing a financial matter, particularly with Mercury retrograde, it's vital that you drill down into the details in a detached and logical way because we can all be a little bit more susceptible to really hard to pinpoint energies. Unfortunately, we could encounter someone who appears to be the real deal, but in fact, it never comes to anything particularly tangible. So a kind of mystery and mist around the way, the way we relate or the way we're discussing finances. But also on the event chart, you can see the midpoint is in the sign of Pisces too, and it's at eight degrees and 18 minutes. I feel when astrologers, particularly on YouTube, focus on one particular influence, it's vital to look at the big picture of what else is going on. Otherwise, we're not really given a totally accurate portrayal. The reason this midpoint is so important, it's the balance of the chart between the moon and the sun. The moon's about our receptive energies, our need for emotional stability. The sun's where we want to achieve things, bring action to the equation. So the balance of them tucked up next to Mars. Mars potentially is a very much more fiery influence. And although the last decan of the sign of Pisces where the combination of Venus and Neptune occurs is subruled by Mars in terms of the third decan, I feel that this brings a, a much feistier energy to bear. 
Also you can see above that that the Moon is aligned to Pluto in Aquarius. The sign of Aquarius is much more to do with detachment, it's an air sign, so it can bring a, a little bit of logic, which could be helpful to be honest, but it also ramps up intensity. So in an existing relationship, however much we're drawn to someone, and we might enjoy indulging ourselves or immersing ourselves in some kind of beautiful experience, whether it's going to a spa or walking in the countryside, going to the sea, or perhaps watching a really moving movie, the combination of the moon applying to Pluto does mean that maybe something could get raised today that's a bit more controversial, particularly if it is to do with someone being evasive, which is entirely possible with Neptune applying to Venus. So if there is someone that we really like but we don't quite know what they're about. We're, we're not quite sure. They're not giving us firm indicators of where we stand. I think it is important to proceed with a degree of caution. But if you really want to uh, trip the light fantastic with your imagination, from the second through to the fifth is a really marvellous time to do this. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm wishing you all the best. Please like, comment, share or subscribe.